Hello and welcome back to round two coverage from the Open at Austin presented by Flight Factory Discs. You are watching the back nine on Jomez Pro. We're here on stop three on the Disc Golf Pro Tour and you're watching Big Sexy Barry, Nate Sexton, Jeremy Colling, Paul Yulabari. Now so far the story of the second round on moving day hasn't necessarily been the stellar play from the league card. It's been more about the incredible rounds that are being slapped down all around the course. Each player on our league card today has taken a bogey in one of the last two holes. Gannon Burr, he is, is that, does he say 15 under through 17 holes? I think one of those was an eagle on hole five, but incredible stuff out there right now. These guys are still in the mix, obviously. Uh, back nine has a lot of scoring potential, starting with this hole right here where we saw Niklas Antela get the hole in one yesterday but they've got to get things moving if they want to be on our league card going into Championship Sunday. Yeah, I mean, hole 10 is going to be playing as easy as it can possibly play. No wind, sidearm wide, low, give yourself the skip, or we saw how Matty O even played it with the big flex shot down the hill, slow turning putter. Really want to just focus on your speed control here because it can get away from you if it gets a wild skip. Would say there's a left to right breeze. This needs to slow down. This is coming in pretty hot on the screen, and that out of bounds wall will mm. just keep it's not close enough where it's going to deflect back in bounds. Yeah, that's but that speed control. Fortunately, he's only going to be 33 feet away. Like this. Yeah, perfect shot there. Oh, we're going up. Okay. Delivery on the 13th floor. And the birdie has landed. <laughs> I do like that play if you have it. Double G went with a similar shot in my group. Pretty cool line to watch. Very wide, but this is looking to be moving in nicely here from Marweed and just outside Bullseye. Yeah, I like the wide play right there. Nothing really could go wrong. Worst case, he just hits and sticks, and he's like circle's edge. That's right. And Gavin will be taking a costly bogey here on 10. Number one C2 putting hole on the course, 13 out of 24 players, and I'm guessing all 13 of them were from the drop zone. It's hard to be on this island and not be inside C1. Birdie for Corey. Birdie for Andrew. And we got to give a shout out to a couple more hole in ones in round two Austin Turner and Trevin Crow. So the ace count on hole 10 alone is up to three. Yeah, so it shows Gannon as 13 through 17 right there. Okay. My apologies. Hole 11, par 5, 1,000 feet. OB on both sides. Probably your widest landing zone is the tee shot, so you're really going to need to get that one in bounds, and then things get a little more complicated. I think most of the guys in this group are thinking eagle three, so they're going to be trying to go with a big backhand second, trying to work it back to the left. Get close to this elevated pin. If you want to play for the birdie, the landing zones can be a little bit small. You have a few options how to do that. See what Niklas. And Niklas after us. birdie in the first seven holes goes par on eight and nine, gets the birdie on 10. And he smacked this one. This and is long. That's the play if you want to put yourself in position for the eagle. Ride that right side OB line all the way down there with the backhand. Get as much distance as you can. Try to get as close to this bunker as you as humanly possible. This is right inside 500 feet from back here. Great turn. This should come in pretty soft. And that will be just inside the circle. Perfectly played thus far for Niklas. This for Eagle. And it's in. He is now 10 under through 11 holes. 
how when you make a little mistake, take a par, Eagles will cure it, you know? Getting wow. back to that perfect pace. Corey, this is wide right, but this has enough stability. I think he's going to be just fine. Man, he just ripped on that, didn't he? A lot of trust. I got a little backstory for how Jake Wolf got his eagle. I, I heard this too. Big forehand nearly to that bunker, which is in itself just ridiculous. And then just inside 500 foot tomahawk to inside I, the circle. I knew a tomahawk was involved. Tom, a big shot there for Anthony, but yeah, just <laughs> over 450 feet minimum for so, the tomahawk into the green. The story I heard was two tomahawks. Oh, interesting. I mean, somebody is making yeah. some legendary stories. Okay. So, uh, well, either knows? way, it was uh, a cooler way to do it than two backhands, if you ask me. Mm, this needs to get hyzering. Starting now. It's got a lot of distance. It is wide. And it's Too just far. not going to come back in time. That's going to be early out of bounds as well. It's going to be a scramble for the par at this point. It needs to slow down. Go this ahead. is a type of mistake that can really manufacture into something you can't come back from. Well, yeah, And the best he can really do from back there is just put himself basically where he was trying to land his drive. Yeah. So it's going to be a long shot to try to save the this up and down fast. bogey. Oh, man. That's disappointing, trying to play position. It is a really hard bounce. thing to do to land in that second bubble. It almost entices you to go for the eagle. And as if we didn't know, Anthony was going to go for the eagle, regardless of where his glasses go flying. Look how high this is. Wow. It's just so easy. And you've got that much distance. There's only one play available. That's Nuke OS. Most stable one you could ever imagine. From 500. <laughs> this is pretty heavy on the left. Six. It is going to skip out of bounds. I have a little putt for birdie, though. I good. like this. Yeah, good height, good width. And inside the circle, you'll have that for the par. Are we with a chance to save his par? Get this nice and close, and he does that. Should be a manageable putt. For Eagle, yes. Four down in two rounds on hole 11 for Anthony. One of 13 Eagles. Wow, that's a lot. On the day. And what a par save. And if Corey doesn't make his putt, then Gavin's actually going to get a stroke on him. Even after Corey's drive was remarkable. And they end up getting the same score. But disc golf is funny that way. And a par from Marweed. Are, are, do you guys think we're at a place where this hole could be considered a par four? Or is it? No, I hope not. A thou I think a thousand feet is just a little too far. Yeah, but I think it could be longer. Could I think it could easily be a mm. hundred feet longer mm -hmm. and still exist fine as a par five. Maybe even two hundred feet. Longer, yeah, sure. To be honest with you, I'm a little skeptical about this whole thousand foot mark on the dot. Yeah, it is a convenient distance. It is a very it? convenient distance. Mm -hmm. You're not tricking anybody. <laughs> hole twelve. 375, I do believe that. <laughs> Double Mando, not a real big deal. Throw it anywhere in here or wider, skip it up this hill, 
with your most stable fast driver probably or fairway driver for these guys and see if you can make the putt i have seen a lot of people kind of pull it to the right and find that out of bounds so that's the one mistake you cannot do this looks great to me you want to hit that hill with a little pace and just check up let it absorb all the speed of your disc anthony does that one as well as you can I'm not sure about the height. A little too much hyzer as well. Yeah. It's going to be skipping away. It stays near the edge of the circle, though. Yeah, the height, it's hard to hit the hill with that height. You know, you're going to fly it, and Correct. you're going to end up to the left. Otherwise, great line, just lower, probably parked. This needs to hurry. Pulled right. Oh, no. What the straight oh, skip? Doesn't quite get the hyzer skip he was hoping for. I really like his form. Once he gets that loaded up, yeah, pretty smooth little move he has right there. Great shot for Gavin. Sit. That'll be a bogey. It's kind of a scary putt for Corey. Looks deep. It's not that scary. Goodness, what a putt. It does look deep, and you can see the wind's kind of picking yeah. up on him right there. I didn't see that a lot out there. That is a solid uphill putt. When you're going up a hill into a headwind, and the, the ground kind of slopes away from the basket on the other side, you can find yourself at the back edge of the circle on the other side if you don't hit solid chains. And it requires a very firm effort to get it all the way up to get the height right. So great putt for Corey. Will be a bogey for Andrew and birdies for the other three. Hole 13, par 3, 415 feet over the OB River. If you don't cross, you go to the FPO pad. I don't expect we're going to see that today unless it's courtesy of this tree right here. Some of those overhanging branches could slow down even a big arm thrower if they try to play it a little bit too inside. You just want to throw something high with a little stall spike hyzer for these guys maybe even. See if Niklas can show us the proper line. It's uh, going to be like a little buttery flip up wide that skips to, I would say, 22 feet. What do you guys think? It's going to be about that, isn't it? I'd say oh, a man. little closer than that. Uh, Niklas right now is nearly perfect. He is going to get to 12 under through 13. I mean, he has an opportunity to put down the round of his life right now. And that is fighting with those high limbs that you're talking about, Nate. I think that that crossed up there in inbounds, but Matt Oren will have a long putt to try to save the par. Calvin, this is also playing with those high limbs, gets under him just in time, and that's the result if you do play that inside line. Oh, and Matt did not cross, so here is that FPO pad. Let's see if he can save bogey. That's high as well. He will be able to save the bogey. Good putt. Wow. It's a lot of birds if he can make this one. What a day. Turns out he's really good at the disc golf business stuff. Um, 
What is that? Not, I don't understand why a flex shot here for Anthony. This is out of bounds in the golf green. I cannot figure that one out. Yeah, you would think just power fairway driver, power mid-range. If what happened to. in practice to take him away from the hyzer line that you're seeing Corey throw? I think maybe those limbs are just terrifying. You get a little bit of Anheuser, you you are really controlling the height. Sure. You know? Sure. That's all I could think of. That golf green's just waiting for it, though. I mean, I'm oh, sure yeah. he expected it to hyzer faster. This oh. is messing with the tree. If this gets through, this is mostly luck. Go in. Okay, that is just incredibly lucky to even cross up there. That was a very errant shot for Gavin, and he's going to have a putt inside the circle to save the par. This has got to get up, I think. I okay, think this is fine. fine. Over, it, yeah. Uh, yep. It's perfect, but that's scary. Yeah, yeah, it's scary, but in the end, it's near bullseye. But, yeah, it's you'd like it to be two feet higher where there's no question about it. Yeah, that drop zone's only if you do not cross. AB will be taking an unnecessary bogey, in my opinion, but. Corey's off a little bit with that one he's been struggling it looks like on the green he's made a lot of good putts but it doesn't look like he's been in real Ooh. control of, <laughs> of the putter sure a lot of different misses right left low low high yeah that surprising air ball on the par five yes. i think was frustrating for him gavin with an incredibly early release on the drive gets lucky gets through the limbs Goes out of bounds by the green. Putt, incredibly early release. Low left side in the basket. Get himself a par. That's living right. They can't all be beauties, that's for sure. Yeah, no, not quite. I've got myself a number of ugly duckling pars out there. I wish I had an ugly duckling par on hole 13. I had ugly duck being two early like Gavin, <laughs> yeah. not even close. Found myself a little birdie. This one's a tricky one. I as short as a five hundred and forty five foot par four is, this one it just requires a very perfect placed tee shot. And then from there, it doesn't seem that far to this green, but there is out of bounds on the right side. There is a bunker right of the pin up by the green and early off the tee if you kick left you will find out of bounds and it'd be in a bad spot off the tee um didn't quite pick a gap and because it didn't kick anywhere i think he's gonna have a chance to get out the shoot and two with not much in the way Corey's been throwing this shot very well. Catches the last guardian. And one thing when I see backhand players, when they get up and next to one of those trees, it's like the worst case scenario. Oh, and Gavin, I don't think that he's going shooting for that left of that initial tree line, but sometimes it's better to miss by two feet than two inches. And I do think that this is the line that AB was going for. That is an awesome tee shot. Spotter agrees. And this is well in Marweed's range. Mm. And it's going to be fine. Yeah, it is. Uh, good kick. Just stops there at the fairway edge. Probably 220, 230 to the pin from there. Oh, very similar from Corey. And fortunately does not kick left. I think you could just barely see the OB creep into play on that left side. Love the look of this one, though. Just get down before the bunker. Oh, yeah. Hit the koozie. Touch of class. A little Sexton Firebird. Gotta love it. 
He's gone with that disc quite a few times today. Do you know what year that is? Is that the April? No, that's it's the... 2020. 2020. I do believe. You, this man knows his sex and firebirds. Mm, I don't like this at all. Yeah, this got way away from AB. Weird. From such a perfect spot. Yeah, that's that was a surprise. Just overplayed it. And a good approach from Corey. A short putt for par. Imagine we'll see a similar thing, but with a forehand here from Marweed. This is a little early on the release, but it doesn't really matter. My thing is concave. Holy moly. Tough Holy lie down here for moly. Anthony. <laughs> did you see that disc? I sure did. Anthony Spinner. Oh, oh are you come kidding on. me? From 50. And no body movement. That's just all arm, all wrist. How do you? I mean, that's Fat Tony showing you that something. That is Fat Tony doing Fat Tony things. Oh, my gosh. What a putt. Just yeah, it looked like he was enveloped with briars as well. Like he could barely even get out of his stance. Didn't look great. Look at this disc, though. Do you think he could <laughs> hold more guacamole on the top part of the disc or the bottom part of the disc? Top. Okay. <laughs> A good birdie for Gavin. And let's get another chase card check in here. This time, Matty O, who's gone backwards in the last two holes. And looks like he's trying to get things moving in the right direction. Get down. Oh, good dig. Wow. And he'll have an opportunity to do so from 37 feet. Watch his jump. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> I what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> it's like he's doing this like little hop thing. It's... Absolutely hilarious. Yeah, to me. It, it is a froggy hop for sure. <laughs> like he's he is getting boing. everything <laughs> he can possibly muster into that 38 footer. It's Here's amazing. what I say I say we move the circle back to 45 feet and we say, go ahead and jump. If you want to throw while your feet are off the ground, who cares? From 45 feet, it looks so ridiculous. I don't want to see the running start flying. Uh, who's going to do that? Everybody. That's what from 45 feet. We're going to have long jumpers that are like Jake Wolves. <laughs> Just Olympic <laughs> Just athletes. Just tomahawking, yeah. <laughs> flying tomahawks. <laughs> Yeah, you might that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that I want that. I just, I'm, I'm tired of seeing pictures of people's feet who are two inches off the ground. Oh, they're cheating! It's like, there's no way we can ever call that. Just allow people to jump putt with their feet off the ground. I don't care. I think we just need to appreciate Matteo's hop. Yeah, <laughs> while, we, while we got it, it goes in a lot. Yes, when he uses that, Gavin, a good drive, just a little short of the pin. And look at this thing late turning in. Very good. Also a little short, but in terms of difficulty, it'll be the easier of the last two putts he's had. It's going to be short. I think you're right. Yeah, it's still in C1 area, but you really got to push those two trees that come into play on that left side if you're throwing the forehand if you want to get close. Just needs to sit. And I, was say, I was about to perfect. say that, that looks like the best one, but it did have a lot of that speed coming into the green. I think this one gets away from you quick. If you do happen mm -hmm. to clear that hill just barely, the OB line is waiting for you. <laughs> and he knew it right out of his hand. Gavin sticks it for. It's a good putt right there. His third birdie in the last four. Tied for fourth. He's playing well. Mm -hmm. not, He's minimizing his anymore, mistakes. But. Yeah, sure. But his, his mistakes are small, and he's going on enough runs to stay with everyone yeah. else. Yeah. 
A great drive from Corey. This is a very difficult backhand out of that um, tight tunnel there. Just, you, you really want to throw a flex shot, but it doesn't allow you to. So you have to throw the slightest late flip out the hand. On little Joey Buckets check in here on 17. Look at that little move he puts on. I mean, that. Gosh, I'm surprised there's enough height there. I feel like I've seen some lower ones get hit by that trees, but a just perfect line. So good. Pass perfect. the basket. That's a great birdie. Look what he's doing on this back nine, guys. He's birdieing. And that's after a bogey on the hold that our lead card's about to play, which is a pretty bad bogey, honestly. He's four back of the lead set by Niklas Antela, who is 12 through 15. Probably got caught messing around with these sand traps up here. That's, I think, the way you would yes. make bogey, is if you just found that left sand trap, mm -hmm. now you got a C2 look to save it. I'm going to guess cage. <laughs> just, yeah, sure. I agree. <laughs> I, I think you're right. I, I agree. <laughs> Put a good run on it, you know? Yeah, it wasn't like sure. he went down... You know, he went down swinging. No doubt. He put a good run on it. Everybody thought it had a chance. <laughs> Cage. Oh, we're going to see Nicolas Antela. What does he have with the forehand? Keeping this one low. Just a tiny bit of flip up, which is how you really want to get the distance here on this hole. And he makes that look so easy, oh. man. So efficient with his body size to get all the power you need on this the 375 is tricky on this one because it forces you into a straight shot and you have to intentionally pull it a little bit early. Oh, please tell me we're going to get a Matty O jumper. Oh, he's, oh, absolutely. He is high yeah, flying, come on, come on, hopping. Come on. Boing. Oh, that wasn't as good. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't need it. The result was as good. Yeah. I mean the hop. Though. We could just attach some silly video game boing sounds to it. That would make it even more entertaining for me. You know what's entertaining? 20 under par for Nicholas on Yoinks. That's very good. I like this line a lot. Just very early. So those trees on the right side, initially out of the gap. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, a no, lot, a little lot, short. A lot left on there, but he's putting good. Maybe he's got so much power, he can go high and go straight out the gap and still get there. No, not going. Oh, wow. Very yeah, short. shorter than I would have thought. Well, he actually got negative movement off the ground. If he keeps that a little bit lower, he can use the ground play, see if Corey does that. This is looking to be a sand risk. Yeah, that is heading for a sandy landing. Bunky. Are we high and short? Yeah, I just don't know coming out of there. Because sometimes Marweed just absolutely rips. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, that was 450. And that time it was short. Corey from 60. And that is very similar to what we just saw from Joey Ooh. Buckets just a moment ago. Boing. Great putt. I don't see a chocolate chip cookie in the ground, but if there was one, he'd be taking a bite out of it. It's the face of a man who's made more than he can count. He just casual walk up. No undue celebration yeah. for a little 40 footer. Who cares? And Gavin just a little bit low. I think he liked it out of his hand and just kind of dropped. I remember whining about a miss I had one time as AB lines, this is off mm. to the right. That's the first really bad putt we've mm. seen from him from yeah. that distance in a while. But Ron Converse shot out one of the best quotes I've ever heard. He told, <laughs> yes, this is great. He told me, young man, I've had more spit outs than you've made putts. <laughs> <laughs> so it's my favorite quote. And he's 100% right. <laughs> great putter from Oklahoma. He's been... 
Every round he's played looks like he's going on a safari for birdies. Yeah. Oh, I think he and was. he's finding a bunch. I think he was 1,000 rated all the way through his 60s. Or th- into, it, into his 60s. I also oh, think yeah. that he is the oldest player ever to win a pro A tier. Yes. Allow me a quick fact check. If anyone had more spit outs than Paul Ulibarri has made putts. <laughs> it's wrong conference. <laughs> well, no. You're go- you Slow you're your not, putt down. You're getting rid of your discs. Like you're going to a, an insane asylum. If you're just like, well, that's my 15,000th spit out. <laughs> like, I think it's maybe time for hey, a new hobby. Couple, a couple things. He is from Oklahoma. <laughs> it's really windy. Yeah, sure. And I... I haven't made that many putts probably in my <laughs> career. So. At that time, perhaps. Maybe at that uh, time. Ooh. Oh, boy. Help. Oh, what a break for Marwe. That. Yeah, you love that that's in bounds. Wow. And not only is it in bounds, but it gets up the fairway. He probably cut half the distance. I mean, that was out of bounds immediately. This is in this danger. Is- does that f- no? Okay. Oh, that, it, it didn't need a kick OB. Got away with it, but that found an incredibly small hole, and was heading for the promised land as well. If it gets past that last cut branch, this is gonna bury in circle two. Didn't quite get back to its edge. That's what you're looking for on this hole. If you can get it to work back, test the ceiling as much as possible. And get that little run it's out. That it's the high stuff that oh, gets no. you on this hole. Just needs to sit. Okay, it gets safe, far enough safe. that it's fine. Yeah. And the guacamole approach disc comes out once again. Man, look at that thing. Yeah, it. That one comes up a lot shorter than Andrew would have liked. Looked like some good touch on that. I liked, I liked the follow through. It looked like good timing there from. Okay, I've been looking sharp this week here in Austin during the South by Southwest festival that's running concurrently. Austin is a town that loves themselves some mustaches. Gavin fits the part. AB just a little short and right with his birdie bid, and Corey looking to make up for the bogey on 16. Unfortunately. The frustration is starting to set in. Good putter, that guy. You know, Marwe has missed a few from just outside the circle, but his C1X putting statistics are still... Intact. They're still intact. 100%. Has he missed one in the circle? If he did, it's not many of them. No, I don't, I don't think, he, think has. he has. No, the circle's very short for Marwi. I don't think he's had a lot right at circle's edge, just mm-hmm. inside too. He, he just hasn't had an opportunity he, to really putt him. Yep. Till about twenty-five, five footers. Let's take another look here at Joseph Anderson, Joey Buckets. Can he get away Whoa. with it? Oh, oh, not only does he get away with it, that is in the prime spot. What a kiss. He's going backhand from here. Going to have to burn it from left to right through this gap. That's what he's done. Very, very good. Very good. Very good, sir. Hey, good, sir. (laughs) Just a very unassuming character. And he just gets it done, man. Just gets it done. What a round. It's the 16 under. So it was a nine under round for Joseph Anderson. Nicholas Antela currently leading the event through 17 holes as we get to hole 18. What are these guys gonna try to do here, Nate? Gosh, I think pushing it straight as far as you can right up into this sunny area would be fantastic. It's a par four, 685, early OB on the left, OB on the right the whole way. You've, I think backhand flip up, probably ideal shot. And then either that turnover or a forehand on the second. 
And let's see what Niklas can do on the final hole after just an incredible day. One bogey blemish. Whoa. Whoa. And where is this? Big oh, hey, kick kicks right. way right. And it Ooh, goes out of, out of bounds. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, okay, it just needs to stay out of the woods. Now, in practice, when we first got here on Tuesday, that was marked out of bounds. They actually realized that that was a little bit overly punitive, and they moved it about 30 to 40 feet left of that spot. There's a beauty from Calvin Heimberg. Yeah, past that tree in the middle of the fairway right there, anything up there is just insanely good. This is just play for for bogey now. Yeah, he he's is way out of position. Oh yeah, he's he's just gonna try to hide in front of the mandatory tree. Oh, and goes way out wide. This is a scary play, but I don't he like that. He does it pretty well, but he's still got his work cut out for him to save the bogey. Risky play for sure. Oh, look at this little flex play from Matty. Oh, great shot from in the woods. Gives him a chance. Where, what line is this? Okay, wide. Interesting. Oh, oh it doesn't no. Work for him. Well, he's not throwing any sidearms. Yep. Yeah, remember that. That's yep, true. That's, yep. Handcuffed by that, because it's just times like that where you want to be throwing that little 280-foot yeah. forehand. Does he? Does he? No way. What a finish. Wow, 80-footer. That's all fun, but I want to see the hop. <laughs> Matty, <laughs> oh, that is a little baby hop. Beautiful what a birdie. Putt. Beautiful putt. And way to bounce back after the bogey, double bogey stretch for Matty o. Ends up pulling it together. A solid finish for him. And Niklas Antela, two bogeys in the last five holes, and he is still right there in the mix. In the lead at the moment. That's probably friendly. I think yeah. that was yeah. going to swing yeah. right out of bounds. AB currently tied for fifth place. Uh oh. I think he needed a birdie here to get potentially on the lead card. I don't think he's going to be leaving with a birdie. Fortunate to be safe right there. And really fortunate when you consider that. It's an instant double penalty. Yes. And you can't really advance much, and you're out of bounds on your third. Hurry. Oh. It's a decent-looking shot, but if just the fact that it never oh. moved itself left, never had a chance to even be in position for the birdie. You have to be left side of this fairway. Wow. What a shot, Andrew Marweed. See what I mean? Then he does that and Sling it just it. rips. Yeah. What a shot. Not only a long way from the pin, but through a tight lane. Very <laughs> that is, good. That's awesome. Yeah. Can you think of any other players that start off with a close stance like Corey does? Explain that. He doesn't like have his body open. His hips aren't facing mm. the target. He starts off with his body oh. 90 degrees and he goes into it the whole way. One person who teaches that as being very effective is Johnny McRae. Oh, yeah. Johnny McRae is another player who does that. Yeah, that's true. Decent kick there. Uh, that cameraman is in scary spot. Oh, no. my goodness. That was a bold position. I, I didn't don't understand why Gavin felt comfortable throwing with the, the guy right there on that line. Didn't think he was going to mess up. Yeah, I guess not. It was a, a really tough time for him to play at that aggressive. I agree to think you, you can reach the green still. It's just mm -hmm. such a thin line, and the kicks are so bad. Obviously, hindsight, easy to say. Oh, wow. what a par save. Come on, Anthony. 
That is an Second amazing shot par. pitch out. Amazing par. That is what he has really improved on this season. His putting has been I mean, phenomenal. Look at that Annie too. Yeah, just to extend it a mm -hmm. little bit more. That was great. And Corey unable to get the birdie. He'll have that putt to remain in a tie for third place. What a birdie, Andrew Marweed. Now that could have been just inside the circle. You're in that one. Yeah, sure. That was a beautiful putt. I mean, aside from AB being in the woods, uh, maybe no one was in a worse spot to get the birdie than Andrew. Mm -hmm. Be a par for Corey. And depending on how many players he is tied with at third place, he may still be on our lead card going into Championship Sunday. And Marweed and Corey still tied at third place, but they are tied with two players with better rounds. So they will be on our chase card and a brand new lead card. Gannonburg course record 14 under. Mm. Defending champion. Yeah. And coming off a win last week, obviously a proven winner. Niklas Antela going for his very first win on the disc golf pro tour that's the story for me yeah. two shot lead for niklas one round to go out here but only a three shot lead over a slew of other players it's in texas it's the disc golf pro tour you know it's going to be a tight finish it's going to be an exciting round there could be some rain in the morning but it looks like the weather might hold off especially when we were thinking we were going to see some really nasty storms this weekend it's been pretty lucky considering what we could have had yeah i'm excited i mean tomorrow you look down that leaderboard and the scores that we saw today, if it's anything like we saw today, they learned from the first round. We're yeah. seeing 14s, 12s. I'm going to tell you the average score is going to go lower tomorrow yeah. if it's any near, anywhere near the same conditions, which means somebody could win from the third card. Going to take something incredible to get it done. Yeah. That is for sure. We will bring the action to you. Come on back for final round action from the Open at Austin.